Hey, I'm Chris Zepp from Make Everything, and today we're making these little parts out of one inch thick steel pucks, but I have to tap them with a three quarter inch tap, and I'm gonna show you how easy it is to do with a tapping head. Check it out. All right, so this is my four inch uh, blank. This is, like I said, uh, one inch thick, four inch diameter, and these are just slices off of a piece of uh, solid bar, I believe. And I bought these from McMaster, and this was just easier and faster. I got this job on a Monday, and I need to turn them around by Wednesday evening. Now, I want to break the edge on these because they have a uh, burr on the edge. And I can do this in the lathe, and you know, it, but it's a little tricky to grab this in the outside of the jaws. I could flip my jaws around. I don't really want to do that because everything's set up really nicely right now. So I have this thing. This is a spider... Uh, stop block. It's essentially a set of parallels for the lathe. If you're familiar with parallels for the mill, they're uh, precision ground bars that set your work off of the vise. But with this, this thing magnets into place and there's different size parallels, different heights, um, and I can put my material right in there, reference it against that block, tighten it down, and this will allow me to get to those edges to deburr them and make a nice little clean chamfer. So there's a little plastic spacer here on the back. I actually custom made this one to fit inside my three jaw chuck. And then these little magnets hold this nice and tight. And I set this thing up on a granite surface plate so it should be uh, pretty flat. It did check it. It was like about two thousandths uh, in parallel. So I'm just gonna take the corner off of this. So now this thing doesn't have this like crazy razor sharp burr on it, I can go ahead and drill uh, the hole in the center for the tap that I'm going to do. So the end goal here is to tap this with a three quarter 10 tap. And so this is a 21 30 seconds drill bit and that's the tap size uh, for the correct thread percentage that I need on this. So now that I got my pilot hole in, I can just drill this out and I can move over to the bridge port to tap it. I also have an opportunity right now to just use this nice big countersink and just give myself a little chamfer for that tap to go into when I get over onto the bridge port. All right, so this is sort of the key to this whole operation. This is a Tapmatic 90X. Now you may have seen these things before, um, but these really large ones, you don't see very often. So this thing will tap a uh, half inch to inch and an eighth inch taps. Um, and it uses this really interesting kind of reversing mechanism where I don't need to run my machine in reverse in order for this thing to tap and retract the tap without breaking it. Um, up here, we've got this disc that we can rotate and there's a series of notches that allows me to adjust the amount of torque on the clutch. So if you loosen this all the way back and the tap finds resistance, it'll just stop spinning to avoid breaking the tap. And if you're doing something that needs a little more torque, you can turn this down and give it a little bit more pressure so that the tap can push through and continue to cut threads. Um, this lever on the side needs to be bound and stopped. So I have this block that's bolted to the back of my vise and that allows this thing to reverse once it goes 
uh, up and retracts on the quill. So the way this works is as it's going down, the spindle will rotate clockwise. And then once this thing gets a certain amount of pressure, it'll actually self reverse as the spindle still goes in the correct direction, in the, in the forward direction. So you'll see all I'm gonna be doing is essentially jogging up and down with the spindle and this thing is gonna go forward and reverse. So if I was all the way down and I pulled it up and I were to rotate it, it would actually wanna rotate backwards. Um, and that's the beauty of these tapping heads. I don't have to put my machine in reverse. I don't have to worry about going too far and breaking the thread. So I have this little setup in my vise over here that'll allow me to get to this. And it's basically this little mini V block and some parallels so that I'm all up in the same space. Um, and this tapping head is so big, it's just sort of, my bridge port's just big enough for it to even work on with this part and my Kurt vise in there. Now the other thing that's nice about these kind of tapping heads is that they are a little bit self-centering when it comes to where the, the tap actually hits the piece. So there's a, a bit of slop in this, so you don't have to be dead, dead perfect, um, and it will still tap accurately. So get this thing grabbed up in the vise, Throw some Tap Magic oil in there and give it a go. So I have the clutch uh, pretty low on this because I don't want to break this tap. It's a pretty heavy thread and this is one inch solid steel. So I'm going to put a generous amount of Tap Magic oil on there. And right now my machine's running at 80 RPMs. <laughs> So you can see, as I pull the quill back, it reverses and starts to back the tap out, and that allowed to break the chip. And that's it. Go through. And since I'm so close, I have to actually kind of help it up the last little bit because my bridge port's really not even big enough to use this size tapping head. I could shut the machine off and I could just sort of back that out the last little, little bit. All right. So super clean thread quality through one inch solid steel in no time at all with pretty much no effort. And I know it's dead square um, and those threads cut perfectly. All right, so I've adjusted the clutch setting on this and made it a little bit tighter because I noticed how much the tap was sticking on that last one. And now it should run through a lot smoother. I'll throw a little bit of tapping oil in there and see how it does. One pass, you can see how it's self-reversed. And now, like I said, I'm out of room, so I have to kind of back it out the last little bit. And once it clicks up into place, it'll start spinning forward again. You can't beat that speed. Perfect. So I need to make uh, eight of these all together, and I'm have to make a couple of them with a three inch diameter as well. I'll get that material from McMaster too. 
and you can see how nice and easy I'm able to get that three quarter inch bolt through there. I'm really happy with this setup and I'm really happy with the ease in which I'm able to do this. Um, super clean and super efficient. So for those of you who have watched my videos before, you know I have these in a couple different sizes. This one will do number zero to quarter inch taps. And I use this mostly when I do like knife making stuff or if I'm tapping anything small just because they're a little less cumbersome. And then the probably the most versatile of these things is the Tapmatic 50X. This one will do uh, number six to half inch. So if you're just looking for kind of like a one and done tapping head, um, this would be the one I would recommend. You can get these on eBay for about 300 bucks. And now you don't need to run these in a bridge port. A bridge port or a mill is nice because I have this really stable vise setup, but you can easily run these in a drill press. This one just has a little straight shank arbor on it. And I've actually even ran this in my mag drill to do tapping on the fly if I need to tap a piece of plate that I can't get over to a machine. So um, if you do any tapping at all, if you're gonna tap like more than 10 holes, it's probably worth looking into one of these or at least seeing if you can get one from an auction they clearly make stuff like this possible um, in a reasonable amount of time. So check them out. All right, that about does it for this little video. Um, super quick project, but you know, people ask a lot about the business side of my shop and these are the kind of things that help me pay the bills and also support my ridiculous tool buying addiction. So um, I've had these kind of big tapping heads and uh, the smaller ones for a while and I don't usually get to use this big 90X one on jobs. I mainly just use it for myself if I'm gonna put three quarter inch bolts in the bottom of a, of a table so that I can level it with three quarter inch bolt leveling feet. But in this application, when the client came to me and said, hey, can you tap these you know, one inch pieces with this three quarter inch tap? I thought I have exactly what I need. So kind of building up my arsenal of tools and you know, being able to use my lathe for the first time on a job that's actually paying is really, really awesome and it feels great to have this stuff set up and in use. So I hope you enjoyed this. I'm trying to share a little bit of the information, the things that I've learned in the shop on some of the tools that I have. If you have questions about the Tapmatic stuff, uh, shoot me a message or send me a comment down below. I've used this stuff a bunch. I've taken a bunch of these apart and uh, I've learned a lot about them just from taking them apart and maintaining them, which has been really helpful to understand how they work. Um, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with friends, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more videos like this and more videos here in the shop. Got a lot of stuff coming up and I'm really excited to share it with you. Again, I am Chris Zepp from Make Everything. You can follow me on Instagram right here, at Make Everything Shop. I share updates every day and show you what I'm working on. Have a little kind of live back and forth with the people that have questions, which is really awesome and I really enjoy it. So I hope you enjoyed this and I hope to see you on the next video. Thanks.